I think the last thing I want to talk about before, before I open up the questions is, for me, I always thought being a chef was having happy customers. I always thought putting good food on the table, tasty food, was it. I thought if the person was smiling at the table there, that that was complete. I found that very different in 1998, 1999. Has anybody ever read Fast Food Nation? It's a fantastic book. It's about our food supply, especially beef, and how beef is processed and how farms. Well, I met a guy named Jay Frost. Jay Frost's brother hung himself. In the book, Fast Food Nation, the farmer who hung himself was Jay Frost's brother. The farm was failing. A lot of farms are failing. Farms still do fail. And I met Jay, and he was so devastated. And Jamie actually had, my wife actually had, had actually worked for the brother. He was the school board president at the, at the school that she was teaching. So it really hit home to me that I'm cooking all this great food, but at what cost? People are hanging themselves because people don't want to eat certain food in America. And once I realized that to, not only is it important to make the customer happy, but to make your suppliers happy, that's when everything came full circle. So now, whether it's a salesman, whether it's a farmer, whether it's a salesman across the country, respecting them, working with them, and helping is where it's at. After working with Jay Frost for about two years, we rounded up 15 chefs. We sat on one side. Jay rounded up his farming buddies. They sat on the other side of the table. We started the conversation. Guys, we have $5 million worth of purchasing power here. What can you do for us? These farmers' eyes lit up. This is 1998. Alice Waters was popular. Rick Bayless was doing this. But you weren't doing this in other cities across America. You weren't, chefs weren't banding together in this, in this kind of numbers and working with farmers. Their eyes lit up. I had one guy who called me that later that year, said, Marcus, you saved my marriage. My wife wanted me to go take a computer job. I don't want to do computers. I want to grow beans. And now he had a market to sell all of his beans. Jay Frost told me, he goes, Marcus, the goal was to get my kids off the farm. Go to college, get off the farm. After two years of working with these farmers, he said to me, Marcus, they're gonna get off the farm, go to college, and I want them back. There's a future here on this farm. And two years earlier, his brother hung himself. I can't tell you, having a happy customer, the table is one thing, making everybody happy is a totally another thing. And that, for me, that was a pivotal point that changed my career. And I said, you know, ethics and morals are so important going forward. And sure, we need to get the best price. We need to beat up our vendors sometimes. We need, to, we need to do things and we need to take advantage of certain things. But my policy with a farmer has never, ever, ever been to negotiate price with a farmer. The farmer knows what he needs. It's our job, it's my job. If I'm buying something local for three bucks more, it's my job to market it and tell the story so I can get six bucks more. It's my job to tell the story. It's my job now to, I don't go to the farmer and say, oh, Cisco has portobellos for 12 bucks, why can't you match your price? No, now on my menu is local portobellos from XYZ farm that were picked yesterday or grown here, and here's a picture of me on the farm. People like that, people love stories. People, in the book here I talk a lot about storytelling and value of perception. Storytelling is one of the number, not lying, but storytelling really sells things. And when you can buy something local, from something from a personal connection, there's a massive story. We all have stories how we're in the room here today. You heard my story earlier about my fondest memories at four years old with my grandmother. We'd go to Arthur Avenue in the Bronx, we'd go to the markets at five, six years old. Those are fond memories. There's a reason why I'm here. And when you can convey that story to your guests, they're not customers. I didn't, I should have probably said this a little earlier. 
when you, somebody's sitting at your table, when somebody comes into your restaurant, into a restaurant, they're not customers, they're guests. A guest is somebody who you welcome in and who you take care of. Your guests want to know the story. They want a connection. They want that personal connection. Back in the early 90s, restaurants didn't have websites. We didn't have all the social media. Now you can connect with your guests so much easier and they can see that you're a real person. They can see you actually out on the farm. They can see you with your kids on vacation. I took a vacation, which really wasn't a vacation because it was a working vacation. Every, every trip I take is working. We toured Italy a year and a couple months ago for 12 days. Went vineyard to vineyard to vineyard to vineyard. We stayed at the vineyards. We ate lunch and dinner with the vineyards, with the owners, the winemakers. And it was all, for me, it was a vacation to most. For me, it was work, but it was a leisure work. And it was awesome because I was living my passion in Italy, took my family, and people wanted to see that online. They like those stories. They can relate, they have a topic to talk to me about. So.